Welcome to Daily Magic, a cozy, growth-minded, sparkly corner of the world. I'm Shayna Wexler, a seer and channel, and a singer-songwriter. Sip tea with me as we steep in the abundant magic that dances through our lives and connect to the depth of magic within ourselves. Hello, my beautiful friend. Whether you are here because you know me from my music, my personal life, are one of my one-on-one -on -one clients, or just randomly happened upon this podcast, welcome. I am so glad that you are here. <laughs> How was your week, my lovely friend? How has it been? Let's open up today's episode with some questions. What has been your biggest source of joy this week? Your biggest source of joy. Take a second to just call it up. Maybe it's something that just comes immediately to mind. Maybe you have to kind of scan across your week to find it. But what has been your biggest source of joy? What has been your biggest challenge this past week? The challenge. <laughs> what has been your largest point of growth? Are you finding that the answer to number three and number two <laughs> relate or go hand in hand in some kind of way? If for you, you prefer to keep the answer to those questions just self-reflective and internal, that is beautiful and very permissible. <laughs> but if you would like to share your answers with me so that we can discuss them, I would love it if you would do that. And we have a couple of options for how we can do that. You can either go over to my YouTube channel, Shana Wexler, and put a comment below the video of this episode. Because I don't know if you know that or not, but this podcast, Daily Magic, it shows up on my YouTube channel as well. So each week, if you go to my YouTube channel, each week you're going to see the Daily Magic episode come out on Tuesday on that channel as well. So if you want to interface with me there, you can absolutely put a comment right there on the episode for this week and we can have our dialogue right over there. I, of course, would just love to hear the answers to those questions that I posed if that feels cozy and comfy and desirable for you. And I've just found out that on Spotify, if you're listening on Spotify, they have now made it possible for us to actually leave comments on the episode as well. Prior, it wasn't that way. You could only respond to a specific question that I posed and I wasn't able to actually respond back and we weren't able to really have it as a dialogue. But now that is available on Spotify. So either on Spotify or on my YouTube, I would love it if you would answer those questions. And I am excited to just meet you right over there in those comment sections and um, join up with all of that. So I am going to save my answers to those questions for those of you who want to join me for a tea and a conversation in the comments in one of those spaces, okay? Okay, today's topic is a very lighthearted, cozy one that I think is just going to be very fun. It is the magic of plating and presentation. <laughs> Yes, plating in the culinary sense, plating, beautiful food on plate. Yes. <laughs> so as we prepare to get into that episode, I encourage you to brew up your daily magic listening beverage and get all settled in and comfy because we're just going to have some light hearted, cozy, magical fun today. Okay. And I recently realized that it's actually been quite a while since I pulled any tarot here on this platform. And so I also think it would be fun to just grab a quick little one card read here to help put us in <laughs> the, the magical mood, right? The, <laughs> the, the mood of magic. So I just have my deck, my Shadowscapes deck right here. You can probably hear me picking it up. It is not smooth. It is not beautiful. I am just, ha I have it in my hands here. And, and instead of doing just an official shuffle um, that is like going to be incredibly loud, I'm just doing a shuffle within my hands. It is still next to the microphone. So you're probably going to hear me <laughs> fumbling with the cards, but let's grab one card 
and ask the tarot what our listeners need to know for this week. So let's grab one of these cards. And okay, the nine of cups in the reversed position. Okay, so that nine of cups in the reverse is really speaking to those of you who find yourself in this moment in time in a space where you feel like you are pouring out and pouring out and pouring out of yourself, pouring out from your heart, pouring out from your actions, pouring out from your dreams, like really, really pouring out out and while it looks like there are all kinds of opportunities around you maybe it even looks like a lot of things are going really well you're finding yourself feeling actually very very depleted you're finding that the things that you are pouring your energy into are not really edifying you they're not really growing you and growing your life for anything that feels like your highest good it may be a sense that there's a misalignment with what it is that you're actually pouring out into. When we pour from our hearts, when we pour from our goals and our dreams in a way that is really aligned with truly what we value, like really our, our, our real sense of value, even when we're tired, even when we're working really hard, even when we're maybe even a little overextended, there is a return of a sense of fulfillment that goes along with that thing that is being created. And then all the opportunities that swirl around you are the proof or the evidence that, that these things um, are really coming to fruition. But when it's in the reverse in this kind of way, what it's really indicating is that no matter how much you're pouring out, no matter how much vision you're putting forth, no matter how much actionable movement you're taking in those directions, you're feeling more and more and more depleted. And you may be in a space where you're wondering and questioning and asking yourself, wait a second, are the things that I'm pouring into, are they really things that are my vision for my life right now? Um, if it feels like you're coming up dry, you're coming up short, it doesn't feel like there's that symbiotic return of fulfillment that creates more inspiration. If it feels like it's just pouring out and then drying up, but yet in your mind, it's like, wait a second, these are my goals, right? These are my visions, right? This is, this is what success looks like to me, right? It's a moment, if, if that's you, if this is resonating for you, this message is not going to be for every single person, but if this message is resonating for you, this is an invitation for you to really take some solitary time. This is, it's a nine, solitary time to go internal with yourself and really just kind of double check and comb through and see if the things that you're pouring into right now truly align with your grander vision for what you want for your life or your grander vision for what you truly value. A lot of the times we can have dreams and goals and inspirations that maybe bubbled up in us or felt really inspiring to us at one part of our life and that maybe we are continuing to sow into that continuing to pour into that but we haven't checked up for a while to see if that is still something that we value if that's still something that feeds us to be building if it's still a marker of what success looks and feels like to us now there are a lot of times as we grow and as we mature that our dreams, our visions, our desires, and our definition of success internal and external changes. That's really natural. That's really normal. Sometimes it feels like, wait a second, I've spent so much time building up this thing, but yet it doesn't feel like it's serving me anymore. Is it really is it really okay to just let it go? And, and what will other people think? Will they think that I wasn't able to be successful or, or will I feel like I failed or anything like that? But it's really a moment to really invite yourself to figure out and really ask yourself where I'm pouring my energy, where I'm pouring my heart, where I'm pouring my vision. Does it still, does it still align with what I truly value? Have my definitions, my personal definitions of success and what I'm trying to build, have those shifted 
since I first started building this particular thing or pouring into this particular thing, has this shifted? And if the answer is yes, that is absolutely okay. We are always changing. We are always growing. We are always redefining and redefining and refining what matters to us, who we are, what we prioritize in our life in any given season of our life. And it's okay for that to shift. It's all right for that to shift. So today, for those of you who this is resonating with, it doesn't mean you have to do any like big, large, drastic thing this week or or throw this thing away or or quit or <laughs> anything like that. The 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 invitation for this week, for those of you who are receiving this message in a way that is it's resonating and it's aligning and you know it's for you for those of you who this message is intended for your invitation for this week is to simply go into yourself and really sort through and really ask yourself the questions of where these efforts may still be aligned and where they may be misaligned it may be something that in a week or two you realize wow i really need to shift in a really large way or it may be a subtle and very minimal but large kind of internal shift right it might actually look the same on, on the outside to the outside observer but maybe an internal shift needs to take place where the why behind what you're doing the motive behind what you're doing um just changes or finds a new place maybe what you're doing stays exactly the same but in order for it to find a fulfilling space again you just have to kind of untangle and really find where that alignment is internally right so it could be something as easy as just a minute shift to see where the circuits are no longer aligning and seeing if those can uh, create electricity again or if they're just meant to be disconnected right i'm not an electrician so i don't know how good <laughs> That analogy ended up being, so let's move on. That was our one card tarot read for today. On the subject of tarot, this week on Thursday is going to be the very first tarot slash guidance episode on my YouTube channel, and I'm really excited to share that with you. If you haven't seen my episodes thus far, go ahead and catch up on those, but I have one where I explain to you my way of reading for you that puts you in the seat of power, presence, and peace when you receive those messages. So in this upcoming read, I'm going to be reading for the energies of the upcoming weeks, the upcoming two weeks, what is on its way energetically for us kind of as a collective as a whole and then I'm going to be guiding you to the areas in your own individual life where you have advocacy to be able to actually work within whatever those upcoming energies are to be able to be as proactive even within whatever those overarching energies are and I will pull messages of our best ways to respond and relate to the aspects of that we are not gonna have control over. Those things that happen in our life in the next couple of weeks that we don't have control over, well, we still have control and advocacy over how we respond and the cards are going to help us know exactly where to put our energies to be able to respond in the ways that are healthiest and for our highest good. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. Did you know that Daily Magic is now eligible for monthly listener support? Now you can just click the link in the show notes below and sign up to contribute monthly donations to help support the continued growth of this podcast. You can choose to submit either a dollar, five dollars, or ten dollars monthly, and I promise that it will be used to continue to improve the quality, scope, and vision of this show. If you feel led to contribute a one-time donation, you can send it via Venmo or PayPal to Shana Wexler or through shanawexler.com by clicking on the Daily Magic link. Thank you so much for helping me by considering becoming a donor. And if you represent a holistic, cruelty-free, and earth-loving product or service that you feel our beautiful Daily Magic community would benefit from, please contact me at shanawexler at gmail.com to see if we would be a happy fit. Okay, the magic of plating and presentation. 
do you have your cup of tea? Are you set and ready? Because here, <laughs> here we go. Okay, so for those of you who have been listening from the beginning, you will likely remember that in episode one, The Magic of Tea Time, I mentioned that there would be some overarching themes that would show up in a lot of the episodes. And I talked to you about the fact that one of the themes that would underscore a lot of the episodes would be the idea of self-love and self-love in regards to knowing and learning our worthiness for receiving good things, for experiencing good things. I spoke about how healthy self-value creates a life view that puts us in a receptive space where we are expecting moments of magic to grace our everyday lives. We feel worthy of it. And so we move through the world in anticipation of what next <laughs> beautiful moment is just around the corner for us. We are looking for it. We are anticipating it, right? And very recently in episode 14, The Magic of Coming Home, I was speaking about the little daily ways that we can prepare and act in anticipation of our needs and for our upcoming needs, our future version of ourself needs in a way that actually forges a deeper, more trusting, loving, home-based kind of connection with ourselves. And I was delighted that so many of you reached out to me directly after that episode to let me know that you really resonated with the little examples that I gave of loving things that I like to do for my <laughs> future self. So this episode really goes hand in hand with both of those episodes and continues on with the theme of finding daily ways to build self-worth and allow us to truly see and experience the beauty and the magic of our day-to-day -day moments. So let's have a little bit of fun with this one, okay? Okay, so let's dive in by sharing a little visualization together, okay? So wherever you are, unless you know the caveat, you know this caveat, you can just say it with me, unless you're driving <laughs> or operating heavy machinery, um, pretty much if you are anywhere else, please go ahead and close your eyes and just take a few nice deep breaths, okay? Big deep breaths. <sighs> Good. Maybe a couple more, big deep breath. <sighs> Good, okay. So now I want you to imagine yourself in the fanciest, bougiest restaurant that you have either ever been to or even just seen. If, you, if, you're, <laughs> if you're on Instagram, you have seen a lot of bougie food photography. So feel free to pull from that massive bank in your mind. <laughs> for this visualization. Instagram is like very helpful for this exact moment in time. Imagine yourself in that fancy restaurant setting, okay? So really conjure that image up, okay? Imagine yourself in that fancy restaurant setting. Imagine how you're dressed. What are you wearing for this occasion? Imagine what your partner or friend or family member who's with you, imagine how they are dressed. Really feel how classy it all is. Really look around and drink in the setting. And now, look. A kind and dapper waiter is on his way over to your table with a large tray. Feel that anticipation when you're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I think that's ours, right? Your food is almost here. Smell the aromas as it wafts towards you. See the server setting your very favorite fancy schmancy style meal in front of you with a flourish. 
See it now in all of its vivid detail. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. And look at that presentation. Look how the food is plated. Look at all the little flourishes and designs and detail work. Oh, wow. I never even thought of using that as a garnish. Whoa, look how thinly this is sliced. The colors, the textures, the visual balance and beauty. Oh my goodness, you say to your companion. It looks almost too good to eat. Almost. <laughs> you excitedly drape your cloth napkin across your lap, pick up one of your many forks, and survey the plate for the best place to take your first bite from. Watch yourself pierce your first bite with your fork. Raise it to your lips. And now chew it slowly, taking in all of the flavor. Find yourself identifying the levels and nuance of the flavors in this one bite. See yourself as you thoughtfully look and search to find <laughs> the perfect words to describe this amazing dish. Yes. <laughs> Good. And now, big deep breath. And lightly open your eyes. What did you notice about your own response to the food in front of you in this visualization? I'm sure for at least some of you, there was initially some awkwardness or discomfort in even just being in such a fancy setting for you, which of course is tied to that worthiness factor. But for right now, let's really focus in on our experience with the food, with our food, okay? What was your internal pace as you sat in that setting? Were you relaxed? Were you rushed? Were you just breathing it all in? Nowhere to be, just in your moment? What was your pacing as you admired your food? Did you perhaps <laughs> stop in your visualization to get out your phone and take a photo of the plating and presentation? And then did you put it on Instagram for me to see? <laughs> did you take time to really study your plate? Did you point out some of the little details of the plating and the presentation to the person you were with? How did you go about taking that first bite? What was your level of appreciation? for that bite, for all of these things, you took your time, didn't you? The beauty of the food on the plate made you feel special. It made the food itself feel like a special treat, right? You took in the sight, the smell, the artistry, you took the time to capture that moment and to feel the inherent richness of it. You were fully immersed in the magic of that exquisite, beautiful moment with your food. Now, let's close our eyes once again. Take a couple of full deep breaths. Good. And now let's conjure a different little visualization, okay? Now, imagine yourself seated in the driver's seat of your car, pulling up to a fast food window, 
receiving a partially already greasy bag being handed to you, handing over your credit card, pulling that paper bag into the car, and yeah, then just shoving your hand into the bag, <laughs> absentmindedly, kind of one hand on the wheel, one hand kind of trying to unwrap the burrito situation that's going on there and kind of just trying to put it into your mouth while you are driving and have your turn signal on. And yes, okay, you can open your eyes. We're, <laughs> we're done with that visualization. You get the idea. You understand where I'm going with this. Okay. I'm sure you are noticing immediately, amongst many other things, that part of the magic of plating and presentation is that it has the power to really slow us down, just like episode two, the magic of slowing down. And when we slow down, that's when we can really observe the beauty and richness of the life that we are living. And I know you're saying to yourself, Shayna, of course I would slow down and enjoy a fancy, rich meal. Of course I would take the time to really be present in that kind of a moment. Who wouldn't really, really take the time to appreciate such a special moment? But for me, maybe that would only happen maybe once a year, maybe every five years, maybe on my birthday, maybe just a really special occasion. And so, you know, that's a really good story. It's a really good visualization, but of course everybody would slow down in that kind of a setting. So, so, so what's, what's the deal? But what if I told you that you could have the beauty, the stillness, the slowness, the appreciation of the center of the moment within the comfort of your own home? You can for just three low payments of $19.99. No. no, I'm joking. No, but of course you can. That's what the, this is what the episode's about, you guys. This is what it's about. Okay. Please, it's not about going out to a fancy dinner for yourself. It's about taking taking what you learn from that visualization and bringing it into your home and bringing it into your daily magic moments. For just the price of mindfulness, slowness, and some plating and presentation, you too can recreate these incredible moments within your own home. I know for some, the entire idea of there being magic around making your food look nice on your plate while you're at home seems like very, very silly. But when we allow ourselves the time and really the lightheartedness to show ourselves some extra special TLC in this way, by creating beauty on our plate with our food, it affords us the opportunity to really build self-worth by doing something a bit fancy or extra or special for ourselves in the comfort of our own home. And it allows us to tap into our creativity and our curiosity and learning. And we can create some really fun art on our plates for ourselves. The entire experience from the creation to the digestion can be a really fun and special one. So whether it starts out as simply using a nicer dish to put your meal on or topping your dish with some fresh herbs or getting super fancy with some knife skills and some sauces and a coulis. <laughs> It's, it's another kind of sauce, guys. It's just, it's okay. Every bit of extra energy spent on making a lovely looking meal is, it is an investment into yourself, into your meal experience, and into your sense of worth around food, which is a big deal. That's a big thing. How we nourish ourselves and our relationship with food is a really big thing in our lives. And it may feel oversimplified to say that if we make our meal beautiful on our plate, that it can cultivate or heal our relationship with food. But it's about what it is developing within ourselves. 
the sense of worth around the experience, around the food itself. It's a really actually very powerful thing. And of course, if you have someone in your life to share this creative plating and presentation experience with, that can be a very fun way to connect and interact while demonstrating to each other how worthy and deserving of good things you both are, right? But this is not just for couples. This is not just for romantic partners. This is not just for making a beautiful dinner for your family or for your children. This applies to you as you, just you. I know a lot of people who say like, oh, once I have a partner, then I'll invest in actually like making a nice meal, but it's just me. So it's okay that I stand over the sink and just kind of shove food in my face as my mode of operation for meals. But but I ask you to reconsider that idea. I personally, I've lived on my own the majority of my life and I have always really taken the time to focus on the plating and presentation of most of my meals that I make for myself because I feel like it really adds a layer of fun to the experience of like when I'm thinking about what I want to eat, I can also be thinking about how I might want to plate it, what order I want to put it in, a new and different way. It's a very artistic kind of expression and it makes the entire experience of feeding myself actually feel like a special and fun thing to look forward to, to create some space and some time for. And of course, many of you already know that about me. Why? Because you're on my Instagram. <laughs> And you see that I can't help but take a picture of how beautiful my tea time is or the brunch that I made for myself or that one little salad or whatever it may be because I love to create art on my plate and I love the creation process and I love setting myself up to feel like I'm having a very special experience even if I'm just me with my pup in my home. Even just dipping your toe into the idea of what this could mean for you in particular opens up a world of fun and learning and curiosity. And of course, YouTube has all kinds of videos about different recipes and different techniques. And so as far or as deep into it as you ever want to go, there is resource for that, right? Right at your fingertips. Or you can sign yourself up for some cooking classes or some knife skill classes, or you can begin to just plant yourself a little herb garden that you get to go outside and pick some fresh herbs and talk your meal with it and feel just like the pleasure of being a culinary <laughs> genius in that kind of a way. I'm really just inviting you into some lighthearted, wholesome fun, just seeing the ways that you can embellish and enliven and make just a little bit fancier the things that are very quotidian, the very day-to-day -day things. We have to eat like three times a day, but what if we took the time to just make it a little fun, make it a little special, make ourselves the guest of honor in our own home? <laughs> by ourselves. Like, what if we did that? Could it be a little bit more fun? Could your life experience be filled with a little bit more magic? Could you feel like a super special chef and just enjoy that experience? When I lived in Paris, I had this really special and fun game for myself. Once a week, I would take myself out to a meal somewhere at a, at a restaurant, and I would see the flavors that they put together, the different combination of foods. I would see how they plated it because obviously nobody does it better than Paris, France. Like no, <laughs> no one, no one, you can fight me. No one <laughs> does it better than Paris, France. And so what I would do is once a week, I would take myself out to a meal. I would see what they did, how they did it. And then I would challenge myself to try to recreate that meal, the meal itself and the plating and the presentation all for under five euros. So I would go to the grocery store and I would see what I could find. I would let my imagination take over. It would fill in the gaps and I would do my best to recreate the flavor profiles and the beauty of it in my own home and it was so much fun it was such a 
fun game that I played with myself on a weekly <laughs> basis. And I enjoyed it. Just I just enjoyed it so, so, so immensely. And speaking of the French, they have a phrase that you may have heard that says, we eat first with our eyes. On mange avec les yeux. And not to get overly sciencey about this, because I know I said this is going to be cozy and lighthearted and like, I'm not, not to go too, too deep, but just to add just like a little, little light sciencey, psychological layer here. I wanted to let you know that there have been many studies that actually show, it's so cool, but it actually shows that the way that food looks to us, the way that we perceive food visually actually has the power <laughs> to change our perception of how it tastes. Yes, yes, that's so cool, right? So since it is true, since it is true, both in like a very poetic, beautiful French way and in a psychological way that we do eat first with our eyes and we create our perception of our experience with the visual part of it, why not make it something beautiful, right? or an attempt at beautiful, or moving in the direction that's somewhat <laughs> more beautiful. Like, why not do that? And most of you know that as I'm wrapping a topic, I usually try to extend an invitation to you, something that you can implement for the week about the topic to see if it is going to help improve the magical qualities of your day-to-day -day life. So for this week, I invite you to experience the lighthearted fun of the magic of plating and presentation in just one of your meals or snacks or tea time. And I know, I know that it can take some preparation or planning in order to figure out what you're going to do, how you're going to make it a little bit special. But that's part of the point. Taking the time to deliberately do something kind for yourself, to plan that in, to offer yourself a moment to slow down, to take a photo of your creation on your plate, to feel bougie or fancy or cared for. That is the point. So I know I understand the argument that's coming up in your head. I don't know if I have time to do that this week. I hear you. And once again, I invite you to experience the magic of plating and presentation for yourself one time this week. And you know <laughs> that when you do that, you know that I'm going to need to see the photos of the magical plating moment. So please, when, <laughs> when you do snap that photo, please tag me so that I can see it. Are you getting the sense that my Instagram is just food pictures and puppies because you are not incorrect <laughs> in your assumption? This has been fun. At least it has been for me, and I'm in charge. So, <laughs> so let's, let's do some more episodes like this one, okay? And if you've had even half as much fun as I did today, can you please follow, rate, and review this podcast on Spotify and Apple? Share it with your friends and family. Hire a plane for some skywriting about daily magic. You know the usual things. You know the drill. <laughs> And if you're interested in doing sessions with me one-on-one, -on -one, I would adore working with you. I offer guidance sessions, tarot reads, spiritual healing sessions, tons of different breathwork modalities, holistic vocal coaching, so, so many things. So just go to shanewexler.com and you can book any and all of those things right there or email me at shanewexler at gmail.com and we will get something all set up, okay? Definitely remember to check out this week's tarot read on YouTube on Thursday. And then every Saturday, I post guided meditations, affirmations, or breathwork videos. So make sure to check all of it out so you can stay super magical. Uh <laughs> So excited to hear the answer to your questions from the top of the episode. What has been your biggest source of joy this week? What has been your biggest challenge this week? What has been your largest point of growth this week? In the comments, and I will join you over there. In the meantime, my beautiful friend, be blessed, be light, and be the magic.